service. My name is Ashley and this is Crystal and we are so glad that you tuned in to Tulare Community Church today. Whether you are a regular viewer or a first timer, we're so happy to have the opportunity to worship with you online. If you would like to learn more about life and ministry here at TCC, I encourage you to get in touch with us through our website, our email, or by phone. We would love to have the opportunity to connect with you and see how we can come alongside you in life, in ministry, and in prayer. We have a lot going on around our campus, as always. Tomorrow, November 15th, is a special day. It's my birthday. Well, no, I mean, that's exciting too, and happy birthday. Um, but tomorrow is our annual congregational meeting. We'll be sharing updates from staff and leadership and selecting our new elders and deacons. And that meeting will happen in the activity center. So if you would like to join us, uh, you are more than welcome. Our soup and pie dinner starts at five, and the meeting will begin at six. 
There is plenty more coming up, like our Thanksgiving outreach event on November 24th. Mm -hmm. Our Thanksgiving Day in-person service on November 25th at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary. And many more chances to shine light in our community through ministries like Dinners on Us, our Roosevelt Teacher Initiative, and more. The details for all these events can be found in the TCC Weekly email sent straight to your inbox each Thursday. One last reminder, today, November 14, is collection day for our Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. So if you have those still at home with you, be sure you bring them to our office as soon as possible so they can be included in our delivery to the distribution center this week. Well, we've come here today to worship the Lord, to give glory to our God who is greater than anything else. He is the name above all names and worthy of all our praise. So let's join together in worship now. Thanks for tuning in today. Take it away, team. together strangers neighbors our blood is one children of generations of every nation of kingdom come don't let your heart be troubled hold your hand
Hear now the word of the Lord from the book 1 John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. It says this, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. 
But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know Him if we keep His commands. Whoever says, I know Him, but does not do what He commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys His word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in Him. Whoever claims to live in Him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard, yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in Him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. We say thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, Tulare Community Church. My name is Ryan. I'm one of the pastors here at TCC. And whether we want to admit it or not, the holiday season is upon us. It is now culturally appropriate to listen to Christmas music. Our email inboxes are flooded with upcoming Black Friday deals and sales. I have already finished getting my wife's Christmas presents I'm not playing around with that supply chain doom and gloom that I keep reading about. This is a season of merriment, of celebration, of community. But as Pastor Shane looked at last week, it can also be a season of overconsumption, of excess, of gluttony. For every virtue of this holiday season, there's also a shadow side of vice. And this is true of pretty much anything, but becomes especially apparent during this time of year. Take family, for example. Family is a focal point during the holiday season. We gather around the Thanksgiving table. We gather around the Christmas tree on Christmas morning. We see cousins, nieces, nephews, uncles, and aunts that we probably haven't seen since the last holiday season. Family is a big deal during the months of November and December. And family is a high value here at TCC as well, and that is a uniquely beautiful thing about our community. We need to celebrate that value, emphasize that value, but like with everything else, the virtue of family has its shadow side as well. At its unhealthiest, the virtue of family, of being embraced, can turn into the vice of exclusion. And it's rare that any of us set out to be exclusionary, but over time, if we're not paying attention, it can happen. And if you're not sure where you stand with all of this, I challenge you to ask this question. Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Our passage today will not only answer this question, but will strengthen and expand our understanding of family as well. Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Now, I grew up as an only child. When my dad married my stepmom, I got two incredible stepsisters, but they were already well established in their careers, and I was only 11 years old. We're a strange bunch, we the only children. If I had a nickel for every time that someone has said, Oh, that explains so much. When they learn that I'm an only child, I would have many, many nickels. Only children get excited when we meet other only children. We may not know anything else about each other, but there's a guarantee that we have more in common than anyone who's not an only child can imagine. Here's a little insight into being an only child. We all wish we didn't grow up as only children. It's quiet, it's boring, it's lonely. My dog, Bo, was a good companion, certainly, but our conversations tended to be a little bit one-sided. We crave excitement, 
And we craved someone to hang out with who didn't give birth to us. We crave being able to empathize with someone, anyone, about our crazy family. More than anything, as only children, we crave having brothers and sisters. Now that's one end of the spectrum. And on the other end of that spectrum is a guy I played golf with recently who is one of eight children. His parents both passed away this past year, and now all eight, including spouses, have different ideas about what they want to do with the family business. I'm sure nobody at TCC can relate to that at all. The majority of you all, though, probably find, yourself, find yourself someplace in the middle. But no matter what, our relationships with our siblings or brothers and, our brothers and sisters, or lack thereof, are complex. They're messy. They're difficult. They're hard. But at the end of the day, the prevailing attitude is so often that blood is blood. You stick it out. You work through it. And so our question for the day, who is my brother? Who is my sister? It could be answered quickly. You could answer it, Marie and David. They're the people I grew up with. They're my siblings. Of course, that's who my brother and sister, my brothers and sisters are. And while that's true, what the Bible tells us is that that's not the truest truth. We're looking at a passage today from the letter of 1 John. The letter was written by the same John who wrote the Gospel of John and who also wrote the book of Revelation. It was probably written in the city of Ephesus and it is most often thought of in relation to its emphasis on love, on God's love his love for people, all summed up in the famous statement that ha uh, appears in chapter 4, God is love. Light is also a significant theme. Remember that this is the guy who wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and without him not one thing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And this is how John frames chapter 1, but he begins chapter 2 with these words. He starts simply, my dear children. Now, is he referring to his literal children as their literal father? No, he, he is writing as their spiritual father. And as their spiritual father, he explains that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was not only for our sins, but for the sins of the world. And he then writes in verses 3 to 6, We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Here's how you know that you're a disciple of Jesus, that you belong to him. Follow his command and live as he did. All right, we say, well, which one? He seems to have had a lot of commands. He seems to have had a lot of teachings. Well, he was asked this very question in Matthew 22. What is the greatest command? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest command. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. It's simple and it's not easy. And John, he takes this one step further and he writes in verses 9 to 11. He says, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. 
But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Now, the Greek word that John uses for brother and sister here, it's a delphos, meaning any believer. No biological family tree involved. We follow Jesus when we love our brother and we love our sister. But what John is doing is expanding our understanding of who that actually is. It's not blood. It's not legality, but belief. Belief in Jesus, belief that he is the incarnate word, belief that he died for the sins of the world. Who is your brother? Who is your sister? Anyone and everyone who proclaims that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Water is thicker than blood. We are more closely related to our brothers and sisters through the waters of baptism than through any other avenue. Water is thicker than blood. Now, this could be where everybody leaves, turns off their computer and says, man, isn't that cool? Being a Christian is awesome. Not so fast. See, here's the tough part. Do we actually love our brothers and sisters in Christ as much as the brothers and sisters that we grew up with? Though your relationship may be strained, though you may be estranged from one another, there is still a bond there that covers a multitude of sins when it comes to our siblings. But if what our passage is telling us is true, then that same bond is not only present with complete strangers, but is even stronger. See, if push comes to shove, will we treat the stranger at the church a thousand miles away with the same love, the same honor, the same respect as our own flesh and blood brother or sister? Do we regard Christians at the church down the street with a demure politeness or do we truly, truly believe that we are more connected to them than to our own biological family? Hear me now, the Bible does not put down our biological family, lineage, ancestry. These are extremely important things in the entirety of Scripture. We need to celebrate those things, and we will, all of us, hopefully and almost certainly, over these next couple months. But what John is doing is expanding our understanding, expanding our belief about who our family is is. My wife Claire is the area director in the Central Valley for an organization called Care Portal. It's a tool that connects the local church with children and families who are connected to and in relationship with the foster care system. And a couple months ago, we were at a lunch for churches who are interested in using the Care Portal tool. And a guy named Nick Ferguson, who is the station manager for Spirit 88.9, he stood up and he shared why Care Portal means so much to him. With tears in his eyes, he shared some of the trauma that he endured as a youth in the foster care system. And he said that if it weren't for a loving Christian family, he very easily would have been another statistic of a child lost in that system. See, the waters of baptism connect us more closely, bind us more tightly than biology could ever hope to. So during this holiday season, I challenge you. I challenge you to ask the question frequently, who is my brother? Who is my sister? Pay attention to how God expands our understanding of those questions through the unifying salvation found in Christ and in Christ alone. Think and pray about how God may be opening you to your family that you maybe never even met. 1 John 3 verses 16 to 18 says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. 
And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. How is God calling you to respond to these words over these next several weeks. I invite you, I challenge you to pray about that, to think about that. And as we wrap up here with our time, I, I wanna share a very quick story. I, I almost never share stories like this, but it was just too wild to keep to myself. I was sitting in Component Coffee Lab in downtown Visalia on Wednesday, writing this very sermon. I had my books and my Bible out on my table, I get up to go to the bathroom, and when I return to my table, a woman is standing there. And she asks me how long I plan on staying. And figuring that, that she's hoping to get my table, I tell her 20 minutes. And she says, I don't want your table or anything, but when you got up a few minutes ago, I heard God tell me that he wanted me to encourage you to share God's word with people. He also told me to ask you for a prophetic word. Now, no one ever in my life has asked me this question at all, let alone that directly. And the only thing I could think of is what has been rattling around in my head all week. And so I told her, water is thicker than blood. And this is no joke. She paused a moment and, and with tears in her eyes, told me that she and her husband had adopted their son when he was 15 from Haiti. And they've had a, a tough relationship. And she's been praying for years that it would improve. Her son is now a Marine and is home on leave. And she told me that just a week ago, he gave her a hug like he had never given her a hug before. He held her close. He smelled her hair, she told me. He breathed deep like a child does with his mother. She said, I know I didn't give birth to him, but that is my son. Water is thicker than blood. And you know the question. Over these next couple months, how will you respond to it? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.
TCC, as we go forth into this holiday season over these next couple months, I invite you to ask yourself this question. Who is my brother? Who is my sister? As our passage today showed us, our biological family is something to be celebrated. It's something to be treasured. But what God does through Christ is expands our understanding of who our family truly is. He shows us that water is thicker than blood, that the bonds that are formed through the waters of baptism are more binding, bring us more close together than biology could ever do. So I invite you to pray, to think about how God may be challenging you to answer and to respond to that very question. And as you ponder, as you pray, I invite you to receive this benediction as you go forth this week. May the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.